Hello, my name is Adam Short, and I'm an Intuit QuickBooks Online Advanced Certified Pro Advisor and an IRS Enrolled Agent Tax Professional with Short Financial Group. And we do have other videos and resources on our website at shortfinancial.com. Today, I'd like to go over some of the distinctions between bills and expenses in QuickBooks Online and when it's appropriate to use a bill and when it's appropriate to use an expense. Some people do get those two confused and different circumstances require different um, transaction in your books. And so first of all, let's go over a little bit about the accounting behind a bill and expense. With a bill, this is generally used when you as the business are um, going to purchase a product or service, but you're not gonna pay for it until later, generally. Uh, for example, maybe a vendor provides you a service and then 30 days later, they send you a bill. Well, you're not actually paying the bill necessarily when you receive the bill. You, you receive the bill and you become liable to pay that bill, but you don't actually pay the bill until you pay the bill. So that is an example of, an, of a bill that you would enter into QuickBooks Online. Some examples for that would be such as the telephone company, utility company, a law firm, an accountant, uh, things like that. Generally, you'll receive a bill from them or they'll send you an invoice, but to you, it's a bill. And then expense is something where you're paying for the product or service at the time you receive that product or service. For example, you go into the office supply store and you buy some paper, you buy some equipment and you go to the cash register and you pull out your credit card and you pay that particular expense on the spot. And so in your books, it would be appropriate to enter an expense for that. So let's go to the QuickBooks uh, test drive file. Again, this is a free uh, test drive. You can Google QBO test drive and get to this for free. This is a fictitious business called Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. We're gonna right click on vendors and open a link in new tab and go over here to vendors. And this is where we will start our transaction process. Now let's say we did go into uh, computers by Jenny, we'll click her vendor record here. And we let's say we went into her store and we purchased some computer equipment, some mouse equipment and cables and a computer monitor, for example. Well, I wanna enter that transaction into QuickBooks. It's appropriate to enter an expense in this case because I went into the store and I paid for it on the spot. I received the product at the time of payment. So that would correspond to a, uh, an expense transaction. So here we have the name of the vendor, which is Computers by Jenny. And then this is the account that we're using to pay that vendor. And so in this case, let's say we wrote a check. So this is the checking account and the date was today, May the 10th. And our payment method is check. And then we will tab over and type in the check number, which is one, two, three, four. Now, Usually for an expense like this, we would want to fill in the account details area. Uh, the account would correspond to the expense account that we're, we're gonna post a transaction to. Now, if you're purchasing supplies or in this case, items that you'll resell to a customer, you'd want to put those here in the item area because this is how QuickBooks will generally track your inventory and your cost of goods sold. So that's what that's for here. But we're not going to do that because we're not actually going to resell this computer equipment to a customer. We're going to just use it for our business. So we will uh, probably have to create a new expense account. I'm just going to create one called equipment. And you see here, there's a plus sign. You can just say add equipment. And that's going to be an expense account for the type. And the detail, we'll just say other uh, general administrative expense and equipment change that to equipment and click save and close and let's just put in a little description computer equipment cables mouse monitor and let's say it's 250 dollars we're not going to bill this to a customer so we'll leave this blank and then the tax will leave blank because that'll be included in the total that we pay and then we will um, have the total here of 250 at the top. And we're pretty much done with the expense. Now, if you want to attach the receipt to the expense, you can take a snap a photo of it 
and upload it here and attach it to this box right here. We'll just skip that for now. I'm going to click save. Okay, and now it's saved. And I want to show you behind the scenes what happened. If I click more and then transaction journal, it will show the debits and credits to that transaction. So in this case, we debited the expense account, which means we increased the expense by $250. And then we credited our checking account, which decreases the balance. I know it seems kind of backwards, but a credit to an asset account or a checking account or a cash account is actually going to decrease the balance. It seems opposite, but it's not. So there's the debits and credits of $250, and that is exactly what we wanted in this situation. Now, let's go back to vendors, click vendors, and let's take a scenario where we want to enter a bill. Okay. Now, just know that a bill requires an extra step. You have a bill to enter initially, and then you have a bill payment to make after the fact. And so here we are, let's say we have Cal Telephone, for example, that sends us a bill and they expect us to pay it within 30 days. Well, we already have some bills in here in the transaction history. Instead of creating a new one from scratch, I'm gonna click the last one, I'll show you a quick trick here, a tip that'll help save you some time, especially for these uh, types of bills that you get regularly that may be different amounts that you can't use as a recurring transaction. So down here at the more uh, area in the black bar at the bottom, if you click more, you can click copy and it will copy this transaction exactly as it was. And you'll get a message. This is a copy. So we just need to, we can close that message and we just need to update the details. So, Let's say they actually sent the bill and it, the bill, we got the bill in the mail that was dated April 25th. So that is the date that we'll put in here for bill date, because that's the date at which we became liable to pay that bill. Even if we didn't receive it yet, if that was the bill date, that's when under accrual accounting rules, that's really when the date we should use. So, and if the phone company wants us to pay it within 30 days, then that 30 means that it's due by May 25th. We'll put the bill number in here as triple A one or whatever it is. And again, we have an expense account and we have items, but this time we're not using items because we're not purchasing, uh, we're not purchasing inventory here. We're just purchasing, we're paying for a phone bill. The uh, expense account is utilities colon telephone. Telephone is a sub account of utilities in this case. And maybe we want to put in here April, 2017, to specify what month this is for. And let's say this month, it was actually 78.94 was our bill. Okay. So now we're ready to click save. And now that it's saved, let's go to more. Let's look, do the same thing for this and look at the transaction journal and watch what happens. We have not, uh, we have not uh, in interfaced with the, cash account or checking account this time. We've only dealt with the accounts payable. We've credited accounts payable, which increases the liability and the amount of money we owe. And then we debited the expense account, which is still considered an expense on your profit and loss statement. But again, we haven't, we haven't actually paid the bill yet. So nothing has happened to our checking or cash account. So that's why you don't see those in here. Uh, so, and then once we, um, once we're ready to pay that bill, that's another step here. And we can go back to Cal Telephone and we can click make payment and another screen will pop up and it will allow us to select the account. In this case, we'll select the checking account. So we wrote a check on today, which is May 10th, check number 1235-47894. And you have to check the bill that you're paying here so it applies it correctly and when you're done you click that little arrow at the bottom save and close and you'll notice that the, the amount up here changes to zero because you no longer owe that vendor i hope this was helpful to help explain the difference between bills and expenses please check us out on shortfinancial.com for more videos thank you